welcome to the 22nd episode <laughs> of the sixth season of the Ubuntu Podcast. I don't know why that invoked laughter. Uh, in this episode, we're going to interview Ian Farrell about the 1310 wallpaper process. We're also <laughs> got another time-saving tip, and we'll read your feedback. If you're listening live, you can send us messages using the chat facility on the website and in the IRC channel. I'm Alan. And joining me is Mark. Hello. Hello. Uh, Laura. Hiya. And Tony. Greetings. How are you, Tony? Yeah, not too bad. What have you been doing? I've been taking part in an experiment. Really? Yes. I've been taking drugs that somebody's given me. (laughs) Um, This is true. (laughs) What do the drugs do? They make you less anxious. They maybe may, they, they may be drugs or they may be a placebo. Ooh. Um, and then was this a guy in the street in a pub? No, no this or? was this was somebody who claimed to be a doctor. They were wearing a white coat. No, they right. weren't. <laughs> uh, this is an NHS. It's a study, um, partly funded by the NHS, and ah. um, basically, yeah, it's to do with uh, anxiety models and things. As a relatively healthy person, I suppose, um, taking these pills, which may or may not be a placebo, for a couple of weeks, and then get to do some tests at the end of it and see what the effects are. I've always wondered what lunatics took those random <laughs> drug t- <laughs> trials. Uh, this isn't just like, oh, here's some random medicine; it may make you better or it may <laughs> kill you. This is something that they prescribe for this condition, and then at the end, the tests will just measure the effects of. Um, right. Right. On something, something else. On something else. Sounds very professional. Yeah, it does. It's all legit. Do you get paid? <laughs> uh, there's a small recompense, but it's really not um, about the money. <laughs> For the amount of time yeah. you spend on it. Yeah, it's about the high. <laughs> <It's> about- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying it. Let's awesome. just put it that way. Laura, what have you been doing? Got a new laptop. Ooh. Can't get you. You've got a new tablet, new laptop, I everything. Know. What is it? I got the XPS 13 developer edition. Ooh. <gasps> is that the one that comes with Ubuntu? It is. And it's got like a laser etched Ubuntu logo on the bottom. Wow. Nice. It's quite cool. Is it nice? It's very lovely. I have some issues with it. <laughs> uh oh. And I'm talking to the lovely Colin on Friday. <laughs> Really? <laughs> From, Who's lovely, Colin? Well, we, we've yet to find out actually whether he's lovely, but he sent me an email <laughs> and he said he'll phone me. We're on, sure you're lovely. We're sure you're lovely. <laughs> he's going to phone me on Friday to see if he can fix the problems. Mm. So, what sort of problems are you having? Uh, it drops the wireless out in, uh, intermittently. Right. Um, freezes occasionally. Right. And what was the other one? Uh, oh, it touch, doesn't. Touchpad. Uh, the touchpad's a bit funny, but that's that's sort of minor. But the uh, it, with my Logitech mouse doesn't get detected on boot. Yeah. Sounds just like a Windows. <laughs> I was going to say it sounds like every other Ubuntu install. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently Andy Piper doesn't have this problem with the borrowed one he's got. Mm. Um, and Phelan has sent us a nice email today about his, and he hasn't mentioned having any problems. Yeah. Phelan so. does, however, recommend that you install Kubuntu. Yeah, yeah but, uh, yeah, but he, well, he reviewed well it. With, he yeah. reviewed it with Ubuntu on it. So yeah, I but. I have 12 months pro support warranty, so I'm going to use it yeah, and get this fixed. And how many people have you spoken to so far? One, uh, two. Right. <laughs> two Americans when I, when I accidentally got diverted to America, um, which wasn't helpful. And then a really nice lady called Linda in Dublin um, who couldn't help me but transferred me to another team. And then, But the Twitter account is brilliant. Um, is this a Dell account or a Dell XPS 13 account? Dell Cares Pro. Right. Oh, so this account. is for like, pro. pro support. Card. Well, well, they can't it is. tell if they can't tell, can they? Yeah. Yeah. But they have access to the support system. And ah, so they right, go I into see. your thing, find your problem, take your support tag ah, and assign you to people. That's pretty so good when Twitter. I mentioned on Twitter that uh, to Andy Piper that I was waiting for a response for them and they hadn't called. And it was a shame because I was hoping to talk about it on Wednesday on UUPC. Yeah. Um, I got an apology <laughs> saying, oh, we, there was a mix-up. We've now transferred you to an Ubuntu expert, Colin. Um, so, yeah, so Colin's going to phone on Friday, hopefully. Oh, awesome. Oh, oh, good for you. How mm-hmm. about you, Mark? What have you been up to? Uh, I went and saw Richard Stallman give his uh, software freedom and your freedom talk. Uh, yeah, was it any good? It was quite good, yeah. I mean, as usual, I agreed with most of the things he said, but sort of wished that there was someone else to say it oh <laughs> uh, yes i mean it, you know it, i generally agree with the principles but the uh, he's you know as everyone knows he's quite extreme in the way he puts things hmm. and he's not you know that it's hard to be inspired by someone who sort of burps in between every second sentence and <laughs> picks his nose and munches chocolate bars and 
you know. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> How busy was it? Were lots of people there? there yeah, I mean... The, and other people enjoyed it? <laughs> it was, there was probably about, uh, I'd say, 120, which was just under capacity for the room. Oh, so, you good. know, there was, it was, you know, he was talking to a full room. Right. And, you know, people seemed to enjoy it. He uh, had a go at someone for saying open source to him. Right. Um <laughs> You need to have a, a Richard Stallman bingo card yeah. with you whenever, you know, does he ask you to enunciate your vowels? Yeah. Yeah. Does he ask One of my colleagues to... asked a question, which get, he asked him, because he, when he does a talk, he says you can record it, but only if you release it under a Creative Commons no derivatives license so that you can't cut bits out or whatever. Which is so, the opposite of freedom, but carry yeah. on. So exactly. So one of my colleagues asked him, you know, why is that? And he said, well, that's because it's a, um, a statement of his point of view and so no one else should mess around with it um and so he then asked a follow-up question well can software ever be uh, could, could that ever apply to software to which his his answer was uh yes in for example if there's an obfuscated c competition where the point is that you make some source code which looks a certain way therefore that's more about the source code than what the software does so it's fine to release that and he's, not allow people to change it he's got an answer for everything he's mellowing he? in his old age <laughs> <laughs> Alan what about you um, I had to call Lenovo support because my screen went funny Ooh. and the guy came out and replaced my screen and was gone in 15 minutes excellent I was very very impressed with that Good. yeah cool. nice guy excellent I think that's it let's get on with the show We're joined on the line by the delightful Ian Farrell. Hello, Ian. How are you? Hello. I'm very well. How's it all going? Taking you a bit warm, but uh, good nonetheless. Mm. Um, we wanted to talk to you about this. Um, what is it? A contest? Competition? What's the, what's going on with the wallpapers? Well, uh, so this cycle, as with all the previous ones, um, what we like to do, it was something that um, we came, we did probably about. I think it's about three years ago now we started doing it in earnest. Uh, and the idea being that people out there who either use Ubuntu and enjoy using it, and maybe they respond to bugs or whatever, but they're not very technically savvy. So they can't uh, contribute code. And no, we were coming up with people, ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, uh, interested parties sort of, you know, with a nerdy inclination or whatever who are interested in using Ubuntu and like it and wanted to contribute to it in some way. And we wanted to come up with... Uh, ways, I suppose, that creative people could get involved and to try and breathe some life back into the, I think, what had formerly been the artwork community, um, which had sort of gone a bit quiet. And, and, and so I thought that the, with a few people like, and worked with some people at Canonical at the time, that, that having this kind of wallpaper uh, process where people could submit wallpapers and we'd go through and we'd work with some people and try and work out what looked good on a desktop, what made a good wallpaper, what made a good image, and, and using mostly photography but also illustrations and, and other things could just be a way to kind of let people contribute uh, in, in a meaningful way that people saw. So is there a prize for doing the best one? Well, no, not really. And that's actually one of the things that we're, I'm trying to reiterate this time, I suppose, is that it, it, it's not it's really a contest. part its own prize. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, with all of these things, it is. It sounds stupid, but every cycle is, I feel like I'm sort of ending with the same sort of slightly cheesy thing at the end of every cycle, which is that, you know, we pick about 10 to 15 each time uh, and pe that people submit. But there are always so many really good ones and you know sometimes they you, you can't choose them all you can't fit them all on especially when we're limited for size and that might change in the future I and mean, we you know there's there's always talk of doing something online so that people could um, could get more and we could do a secondary pack of like you know other community favorites and stuff like that and websites like omg uh, omg ubuntu they tend to go through and pick out their favorites you know sometimes a couple of times during the process as well so it's cheesy to say everyone's a winner because everyone is but it's <laughs> But it's a great way to, to to get people together, to put stuff in, to sort of put a set, but to also create this fantastic library of pictures that people can just choose from. To be fair, nobody gets a prize for finding a bug or putting a patch to Unity. So, you know, yeah. it's it's not unreasonable to think that someone who submits a, a photograph or a you know some other piece of artwork for the wallpaper should 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 get a prize either, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um luckily people tend not to to ask for them but it's nice to know it's nice to kick it off you know like this isn't 
a contest as such. Taking part, as you say, is its own reward. Mm -hmm. uh, and luckily, people seem to be to, seem to really engage with that. And, and every cycle, we get loads of submissions. I think we're pushing three hundred uh, wow. in the group already at the moment, which wow. is brilliant. You know, yeah. it's, uh, and it tends to it tends to spike like this. Th this time around, also, um, what I've done is sort of. I wasn't sure whether to do it or not, but I put a little video out there as well, which I hope is a sort of one-minute explainer, which is also an opportunity for people who maybe uh, wouldn't read a blog post. Their friend takes loads of pictures, and they wouldn't necessarily read a big, long blog post that mm. talks about you know, IRC channels and stuff like that. <laughs> but you can send them a little video that then has got URLs at the end of it. Um, and uh, we've posted that up. That's on the... Um, I hijacked Canonical's design blog again. So if you go to design.canonical.com, there's a post on there about the wallpapers, which is pretty much pinned to the front. Cool. Um, so people can go there. They can read the blog post. Uh, that links back to my blog, which has a silly address. But um, they can find the video there, and they can hopefully share it with their friends who take pictures and stuff and who you know may have never even contributed to an open source project before. And it's, again, a way of just getting the idea of the notion of it out there to people who are just unaware of it in some cases. So you mentioned before how the process like gets a discussion going and helps you look at um, like what makes a good wallpaper. So what does make yeah. a good wallpaper? Well, typically the advice that we give, and we've, we've kind of settled on a few uh, sort of key things in the last few, um, last few releases. Main, main thing is really to keep it quite simple. Yeah. So to go for something that has maybe a single point of focus. So textures uh, and flowers that have maybe, you know, some sort of sort of clever focus where you're focusing on something in the foreground, you get some nice depth of field in the background, they're mm -hmm. quite, that's quite a good idea. So flowers are good. Insects of a, of a nice friendly variety are good. We get a <laughs> surprising number of terrifying spiders, uh, mostly. <laughs> I just never, I, I really love spiders, but... Like some of the photos people take, just can you imagine someone's system booting up and they've got this terrifying arachnid in front of them? So something that, you know, wouldn't upset someone turning on their machine, something you wouldn't mind showing your mum, uh, yeah. a variety of colours. We like to have a set that's a variety of colours because mm. obviously we're lucky with um, Ubuntu that it's its default theme is quite neutral mm. and then the wallpaper is quite vibrant and quite bright and quite exciting. So we like to have a, a photo set, I think, in there that, you know, generally lends to that as well. So it's a nice variety of colours. So sometimes, you know, really nice skies, sometimes grass, flowers, you know, those things are kind of good. Um, and we so, tend to avoid uh, things clashing with elements on the OS as well. So things that clash, not too much over on the uh, left-hand side and top left corner, you know, that would interrupt right. the launcher and stuff. So who decides which which ones end up on the CD? Well, that's the other lovely thing is that each time uh, we pick uh, a bunch. So I tend to, because I'm formerly a Canonical employee, I tend to kind of step back from it and try not to sort of lead the witness too much, but try and act as a kind of um, standard bearer for it. So what I do is when I tend to kick this off, I go and talk to the people whose photos were picked last time, which sometimes includes people who've been involved in the past. Um, and then go and talk to people like Ken Van Dyne and Paul Sladen and people like that who are active in the community and, and at Canonical and have helped in the past to just help us get it onto the disc. So former contributors get to their, their – if there were a prize, part of it is to – you know, to help with the next lot, we ask them if they'll get involved. And sometimes they say, you know, I'm sorry, I can't. And sometimes they go, yeah, I'd love to. Um, and we hold those conversations in public on IRC so people can come along to hash 1310 wallpaper on Freenode. They can hang out. They can see the conversation happening. They can see us trying out different ones and going, oh, no, it looks terrible. It makes my launcher a funny muddy color. It looks really weird uh, or whatever. Oh, so you actually try it's not just a case of looking at them in isolation. You actually try them out on desktops as well. Yeah, well, you you kind of have to because of the the way that aspects of the interface change color. Mm. You can sometimes have some funky combinations of colors that uh, make the launcher go a really odd color. So um, we've had that, and th that algorithm I think is changing per release anyway. They're tweaking that in Unity, so it's worth us testing it every release and with a build of thirteen ten rather than you know checking it on the old one, say. So so that just so it looks right. You said you've had like 300 or so submissions. I know in the past when I've clicked through to the Flickr group or wherever they're hosted, I've, I've seen like page after page after page of hundreds of pictures of flowers and lots of pictures of padlocks and all kinds yeah. of pictures of <laughs> weird stuff. Yeah. How come there's so few this time? Is, 
Have you put some limits on it, or are just people not contributing? Why, why is this so low this time? Well, one thing we've done this time around, I mean, the, we only kicked things off uh, at the end of last week. So oh, one right. of the things is obviously there's only, so there's only been 300. That's, that's basically in, that's less than a week. So that's pretty good. Oh, wow. We've got nearly 400 members of the group and about 300 images. So there's a bunch of lurkers in there who are kind of hanging out and waiting to post their stuff up, which is good. Um, what we've also done this time is limited it to one entry. We did it a couple of releases ago, one entry per person. And the reason we did that was one, one uh, cycle we had a guy who basically gave us his holiday photos. <laughs> <laughs> but but honestly, it was all of them. I mean, some of them was like, you know, me in the bar. And there were like street sort of monster. And I think there were a couple of girls that he kind of liked. And it was just like, okay, wow. this is... No one's going to want your holiday on the desktop. You might not even want your holiday on the desktop. Why are you sharing it with us? You know what? 20 million people around the world absolutely desperately need, I tell you what, Toro Molinos were cracking. And they just, it, oh, it's it just Graham a weird Beans, thing. was it, doing the... Yeah, yeah it really was. In my head it was. But the, um, but yeah, that, so we, we limited it to get people to choose, to, to really think carefully about it. And they can swap it in and out. So the group, uh, the way Flickr groups work, once you join a group and you submit an image to it, if there are limits, you can at any point remove your image and replace it with another one. So uh, one of my colleagues at work actually did this last cycle. He was in and out, in and out, in and out with about three pictures and then unfortunately missed the deadline. So, <laughs> so you, you, you are in complete control. Uh, and it's also worth pointing out that any image do you put in the group because we have this question every time as well uh, you retain complete ownership it's your picture we have no desire to strip you of any rights for your image whatsoever all you're doing by giving it to us and by agreeing and, and we check this with individuals once their picture has been selected and they sometimes supply us with a higher resolution one so that we can crop it and do all sorts of stuff like that um, it's your picture and it always will be and you can do whatever you like with it and you can give it to other people and it can appear elsewhere and whatever all we're doing with this submissions with having a process around submissions and things is just double checking it's your picture because you can already see in there there's a few pictures that are quite clearly not an individual's work they're borrowed from other places uh, and and borrowed and, um, and, <laughs> so and the, is there a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff you have to do to go and like check every picture and Generally speaking, I mean, we're not checking each and every one, but there are a few. Sometimes they stand out for various reasons. They stand out because they look um, a like bit BBC too... logo in the corner or <laughs> yeah. something. We had one that had an Adidas logo still in it, and, and the guy got really shirty with me. I was like, dude, you've not even taken out the logo. Like, come on, at least play the game. Um, but generally speaking, the ones that are a bit off are obvious because uh, I'm I'm a bit of a sort of... Uh, I'm the kind of logo Stasi, so I go through them all. And when people are using the old logo, which, you know, it's like, come on, guys, it's been years now. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, so I help people with that and point them in the direction of the assets for that. But also for things like there's one illustration that was in there earlier that was um, a picture of Snow White. And it's very clearly borrowed from the stencils you can get for the back of computers and stuff like <laughs> that. So there's, there's some obvious ones. And then sometimes there's just something sets you off. Either you've seen it um, before or... Um, the ones that are included in other distros sometimes are quite popular. So I have a reasonable awareness <laughs> of wallpapers for other distributions of Linux now because I go, that's, that's awfully nice. Where have I seen that before? Oh, that's elementary. All oh, right, fine. So are so, people allowed to submit things that are computer generated or drawn with the GIMP or Blender or something like that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, um, so anything, a photo, an illustration, however you've chosen to create your image, um, we would love to have it. So it can be a vector thing that you've done in Inkscape. It can be a, a wonderful sort of, pastel type stencily type thing that you might have done in in the gimp using some of the cool brushes and filters in there or it can just be a photo that you know you've edited in dark table you've taken or whatever you know whatever it is uh, by all means submit it do you make people use open source software <laughs> to do their artwork no i must admit we don't we discussed well we've discussed it a few times people talk about it and it's partly sometimes the the hosting of the thing on Flickr sometimes can be a bit contentious as well but mm. it's the thing about it is it's, it's, um, it's a very good tool. It remains a good tool for corralling lots of images. Yeah. Um, and I'd also love, I mean, if anyone listening, with a few times we've had conversations with people who are contributors. Um, but again, because they're mostly contributors who are contributing because they can't write code. When we have great ideas, we think, oh, that'd be brilliant if we could build this thing. It's like, no, oh, get right on that. <laughs> oh, I can't. Um, but it'd be great to work with some people on building something um, using an open source tool set like, you know, like a default thing, like a, a Drupal or a WordPress for the future and building our own thing. That would be super brilliant. And if anyone's listening who would be delighted to get involved in that and could corral some, you know, some resources and some time and some 
some ability, that would be fantastic. But um, it seemed to work so far with um, yeah. without having you know to use free software tools, being able to use uh, Flickr, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, and it's nice not to impose any tools on people because we we originally went to Flickr because it was a place where photographers hung out, and we wanted originally we were just thinking of photos, um, so we don't really want to stop people being creative, and if they're good with a certain tool, I don't want to stop them using it, um, but if they want to use and can demonstrate, you know, great ability with open source tools, so much the better. But we're more interested in the, in the product than the tools so once you've uh, once you've selected the winning entries do you is there a lot of work to do to do things like make sh- making them work on different sizes of screen or potentially in the future phones tablets tvs that sort of thing or like once you've selected it do you know already that that's just gonna you know if you crop it then it'll crop nicely or if you scale it then it scales nicely do you have to do some processing or anything we tend to do a bit of processing just to get the size down usually. Right. So um, we'll get the original images off Flickr if they're, if, if they're high enough resolution or we'll talk to the person directly about getting the high-res image. And actually what tends to happen, that one of the reasons we're running this process slightly shorter this time or last couple of times is because if you have too much time, uh, people forget they've submitted and then when you contact them, you can't get the image. But we right. crop them, we, we get the, the high-res image, we crop it down if it needs to be. Uh, and then we resample it to, to get the size down. And actually, phones and tablets are a completely, you know, a, a sort of a future concern. Yeah. But by going by f- by going for sixteen hundred tall, hopefully yeah. we're we, you know we're we're sort of future proofing a little bit. There's a bit of room there for for using it on a tablet type device, say. Mm. And there's certainly plenty of room there for using it on a phone. And sometimes you know they'll crop and they'll fit just kind of nicely. And and ones where people have put artwork in the middle that is clearly the focal point from a desktop point of view. Well, for the future, we'll have to. You know, think about how we cater for that. But for for now, we focus mostly on the desktop, and it's just a happy coincidence that most of the time they'd be all right for other devices. Awesome. So, if people want to submit their pictures, uh, where can they do that? How can they get in touch with you? What do they do? Well, the simplest thing to do probably is to send them to design.canonical.com. So, go there, have a look at the blog post about the wallpapers that's on uh, on the blog there. Uh, that's got links to everything else. So, you can find us on IRC in hash 1310 wallpaper on Freenode. Uh, I'm hanging out there all the time. Come and join me. It's quiet at the moment. Um, so it won't it's stay. You and me. In there. It, it, <laughs> it literally is. That's why I said hello this morning. I was like, my God, there's someone here. Hooray. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, so go to the blog. Uh, find us you'll find us on Flickr if you search for us it's the saucy salamander wallpaper submissions group but that's quite wordy uh design.canonical.com is your best starting point great cool. well thanks very much for joining us and mm. uh, perhaps we'll catch up with you later once you've made a decision and uh, find out how you came to the decisions you did mm, yeah that'd be great indeed. thanks a lot guys right. take care cheers, cheers. Good good bye bye, bye. And now it's time for some command line hate. Ooh, what does that mean? This means we're going to tell you about a command. Rather than, normally we do command line love, which is about a command which you might want to run. Yes. Uh, this is going to be command line hate, which is a command which you really, really shouldn't run. So if someone tells uh, you to run it, don't. don't. I came across this, um, someone posted it on Twitter, that someone had been telling them a story of the time they ran this command by mistake. I can sort of understand <laughs> how it good. came about as well. So... Um, the command is um, the source command, which um, will execute all of the commands in a file in your current shell. Um, and that's used for things like you've got a, a bash RC file, which sets up your environment. So it will do things like if you want any commands aliased by default or any environment variable set every time you open a shell, um, that sort of gets automatically run. And if you change it, then you can rerun it using the source command. However, what someone did was source their bash history file. So bash did, history. Did they mean to do I source I suspect, bash RC? I suspect they, they meant to do bash. So the, it's dot bash underscore history. There's also a dot bash underscore profile, which does a similar, if not the same job to bash RC. Right. Right. So I suspect they were trying to do that and hit tab too many times or something. So bash history is where it logs every time you run a command in your <laughs> shell, 
unless you put a space as the first character, it will record that command in your bash history file. So if you then do source bash history, then it will rerun every command which it's recorded. So potentially in the, the right last... The last 500 commands you've run on your yes. computer. Mine would be lots of LSs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine. yeah, which is fine. You know, changing directory, seeing what's in the directory, that's fine. But then if it's, you know, delete everything in the current folder, yeah, then it's not such a good thing. No, I can see things go quite badly wrong Yeah, doing that. You have to hope that the first one was something like sudo, which would just end you, uh, give you a prompt and you can get out of it. But yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, yeah you, you're not always going to be that lucky, I suspect. So yeah. Um, that's our command line hate for this week. And now it's time for your feedback. A, a, pl- a perplexed Dave emailed us. I've noticed that you started introducing the podcast as the Ubuntu podcast rather than the Ubuntu UK podcast. What's that all about then? Good question, Dave. I don't understand it either. Really? I thought we've always been the Ubuntu podcast. Well, it's always said, the website has always said it's the Ubuntu podcast from the UK Loco team. Yes. But then on the show up until... And the logo and so the actually, EPC Twitter then, ID. Actually, very originally, originally, we called it the Ubuntu UK podcast. Yes. Uh, yes. And which is why the name is UUPC, right? Then uh, we figured that if you searched for a podcast about Ubuntu, you're probably not going to put the word UK in the name. You're probably going to Google for Ubuntu podcast. And so having the word UK in the middle of all of the titles of the episodes and uh, all of the pages on the website made it less appealing for um, spiders and other internet bots and stuff. So we figured drop the word UK from the middle of those two words of on two podcasts and then we're going to show up a bit of seo type stuff yeah. there but um, go on we did carry on introducing the show as ubuntu uk yeah. podcast till this season i think yeah basically there was another show that called themselves the ubuntu podcast but they've gone away now so we might as well yeah we figured we'd be consistent it. yeah ubuntu uk we're not, pod- we're not just for uk people exactly. we're not we yeah. welcome all comers and we're not just about Ubuntu either, but That's we can't true. just call ourselves podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else does that. The podcast podcast. Yes, yeah, I do have this have trouble. When I, when I tell people about the show, it's called the Ubuntu UK podcast. Oh, is it about Ubuntu? Mm, yeah, you, some of it. Yeah. And is it only for people in the UK? Okay. No. no. <laughs> is it actually a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> That's yes. the one thing we are certain about. Yes. So yeah, then, that's why. There are that's people why. who disagree with that, but yes. <laughs> and on the subject of nitpicking, we've had this delightful voicemail. This is Brian Ackroyd calling via SIP. It has come to my notice that you use the term UTC. The wing commander would definitely not approve of this. It is a British podcast and, as with the BBC World Service, should be GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. So please... No more UTCs. That's a good point. No, it's not. I think we should <laughs> start using Swatch Internet Time. <laughs> the, reason, the reason it's not is actually it comes from the fact that we always specify UTC in meetings in Ubuntu because people's clocks, uh, people, whenever you see it online, it's it, we always specify forward or backward from UTC. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, some Still things GMT. specify... <laughs> Actually, it's not. UTC and GMT are not the same thing. No, but... It, for, They're close they, enough. They yeah. just happen to coincide. Yeah, I I get the point. Yeah. But the problem is UTC is known worldwide and GMT isn't necessarily. Really. But it is the know. Ubuntu UK podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We've always been at war with Eurasia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, all right. I'm not sure what to do there, whether we edit that. You email in and let us know. UTC or GMT or something else. A triumphant Federico emailed Laura to point her at a YouTube video. I think you might find it interesting that both that both math and maths are acceptable. I mention it to you because you corrected me while reading a feedback mail on the <laughs> on the Ubuntu podcast. Yes, I remember he'd written an email saying math, and I said I read it as maths. Yes. Why is math acceptable? Uh, I watched the video and there was an American linguist who lives in the UK and she was explaining it and apparently math and maths were just written abbreviations for a long time. Math came first, then maths, 
and math and it's short for math maths it's short for the greek which didn't have an s on it but it was mathematica which means a bucket load of maths <laughs> so it's not exactly plural but that's where the s comes from um and basically one country took one approach and one country took the other when they started reading out the abbreviation so again we're the uk podcast so, so we say maths yes in the same way that we say lego yeah oh definitely <laughs> Oh. Uh, Americans say Legos. Yeah. It's what? weird. They do. No, it's freaks. really weird. Yeah, but we we welcome our transatlantic cousins <laughs> here on, on the Ubuntu podcast. <laughs> Jimmy round us. Two years ago, I made one of the most expensive mistakes of my life. Around one thousand euros, I bought a Dell XPS fifteen. Uh, which has impressive features, but unfortunately is a nightmare when running Ubuntu. Sticky out tongue, smiley. <laughs> the computer is extremely loud, even by using only a simple text editor. The battery life is one hour less than running it with Windows. The NVIDIA driver does not work. Need to install Bumblebee as a workaround. And the HDMI output does not work at all. My question is, could you guys recommend me a computer that does not have these problems? Summary, I just need a computer that works with my beloved Ubuntu and does not make me deaf. Smiley. So this isn't the same one you just got, Laura. This is the... No, it's a 15-inch one. Right. And this is uh, this is one of the ones that's got two video cards. It's the Optimus that's got dual video cards. Yeah, that's the, the Quite monster, NVIDIA right? problem. And so, yes, that is annoying. And that's you may have seen a picture of Linus Torvalds doing his... Um, sticking a middle finger up at the camera. Yes. Um, and that was because of NVIDIA and Optimus. So, um, yes, it's a well-known problem, and it is annoying. I think in recent releases it's better, but it's still frustrating, and there are still some Optimus-based systems that just don't work. We we get people asking support questions of these all the time, and it is very frustrating. So my my Condolences. response would be, if you don't need, if you don't need to play games... Buy a computer that has an Intel video card, and then you can delight in GPU lockups as I do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's no plain sailing anywhere. If you get Dell XPS 13, which is designed to run Ubuntu, you may have less problems. You may. Fewer problems. Your mileage <laughs> may vary. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but at least you get to talk to Colin from Ireland, apparently. You may get to talk, or you may get diverted to someone else. Uh, yeah, that's true. Colin's going to be busy. <laughs> and finally, we have this from David Hunter. It's official. I have accepted the intro, bumpers, and outro music on the podcast. I will now let go of my multi-year desire to remix each show and release it with different music. Thank you all for the hard work that goes into the show. The content is great. Oh, thank I've you. Him down. Of course, David. welcome to remix the show. I believe our license allows that. If you did want to put in your own, either out of copyright or Creative Commons music. Yeah. Maybe someone should do an, an episode with uh, <gasps> music from the Intercontinental Music Lab. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Well, well We done. should do a, um, an episode where we swap out the music and put something else in. Like have a guest music. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> guest Maybe. music. That was me. That Can you tell that was just it? something I just That thought. was an Alan idea, wasn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, it was, well, wasn't it? He opened his mouth and the idea came out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. Press a button. Tony. And when you say we, you actually mean Tony. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Press a button. The Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that tickles, titillates, or taunts you, tweet us at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook, and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. We really would like to hear from you. So go on, do your duty, keep calm and compose an email. That's all for this episode. Join us on Wednesday the 31st of July at 2030 BST for our next <laughs> live episode. Uh, and that's half past eight in the evening in the UK. And what's that in UTC? I'm not telling you. Or GMT? No, no, I'm not telling you. No, he, was, he was keen to hear it in GMT. No, 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 that's fine. Okay, I have I I have an objection to using GMT because we're now in BST, not GMT. So I'm not going to use GMT. Oh dear! If we start listening to pedants, we'll be in trouble all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good night. Good, Good night, night everybody. Good night. Join us the next time. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>